When we started setting up the new fine woodworking shop, I immediately knew that we really needed to get a CNC machine in here. I didn't know why. And this is the story of what I learned about having a CNC machine in the first few months of having the CNC machine. Check it out. So Next Wave sent us this HD 520. It's a two foot by four foot CNC machine. And it's got a two horsepower water cooled spindle on it and all sorts of cool stuff. For the record, I had a CNC machine personally, like a little kit CNC machine. I was a little bit scared of this thing because I thought if my little kit was X amount of trouble, this thing is going to be that times Y amount of trouble. And that didn't turn out to be the case at all. <laughs> this thing was a dream to set up and get running. Um, and there was a lot of things that I was nervous about. I was particularly nervous about running VCarve on a PC. PCs and I don't get along. We just have this cheap little PC that our IT guy, I think, was getting ready to throw away. It's a barely functioning PC, but it runs VCarve just fine. It also runs the control software just fine in case you don't want to use this little uh, tablet thing or whatever that comes with the CNC. But first off, as soon as people had access to the CNC, they immediately started asking me to help them with the CNC. So right now I need to start a cut for Mike Pekovich, who needs a router template done up for a class that he's teaching. So I'm gonna get that started. And while this is running, I'm gonna tell you about my experience setting up the CNC. First off, I had to get to work building a base for the CNC. I've seen people weld up big metal tables for CNCs, but I am a woodworker and I decided to try and make a really sturdy and heavy base for the CNC. So I started by milling up some ash. Here I'm running some grooves into the ash and these are gonna glue up into leg assemblies. So each of the four legs will be two pieces of eight quarter ash. And this is gonna make for a very heavy, beefy base. And in those grooves that I milled in, I'm installing some eighth inch hardboard. And that is just going to keep everything aligned when I glue up these L assemblies for each leg. And this worked beautifully. I mean, they came out as flush as you can want. So each of the legs is this big eight quarter ash L assembly. Here I am drilling holes for bolts, which will attach all of the assemblies together. And now I'm gluing in a piece of plywood between each leg on the side. And this is gonna keep the whole thing from racking. It basically makes the base two solid assemblies, and the only thing in between them will be the long stretchers. Now, in those long stretchers, I am embedding a dowel that's going to go cross grain from the stretcher. That will give me side grain to screw into with a lag bolt. So each leg gets two carriage bolts through the side of the stretcher and one lag bolt through the end of the stretcher into that cross grain dowel. I wanted to do this because it makes it simple to assemble. It doesn't require a whole lot of special hardware, but you could take it apart if ever needed, make it longer, make it smaller, do whatever you need to it, move it. It makes it a strong knockdown assembly. So that does it for the base of the CNC table. Um, I am missing one nut. I thought I left the store with 16. Apparently I left the store with 15 or I lost one along the way. But this thing is stout as can be. I'll get that nut on there and it's time to start working on the top and then get the CNC on, which is the most exciting part. 
I'm really pleased with this base though. It is something that no heavy joinery, um, just about anyone could do this with, you know, construction grade pine or, or fir or whatever you have available to you in a home center. Uh, I went with ash just because, quite honestly, I could justify it and it's heavier and I think it's gonna be a little bit better, but I think that this design would work perfectly fine with uh, two by eights or two by sixes, whatever is available to you. And yeah, so onward. After putting a piece of MDF on the base, just to serve as a place to put the CNC, I decided to assemble the CNC. I probably shouldn't have done this by myself, the folks at Next Wave said, you're gonna need somebody to help you with the assembly just because everything's heavy, but I am stubborn. So I was able to wheel the CNC bed over to the table and just prop it right up there and slide it on. It wasn't that bad. Yes, I left this over the weekend and it killed me the whole time. Every thought I had was, ooh, I should sneak down to the shop and finish putting together the CNC. Uh, I was not able to sneak out, but here we go. After reading through the instruction manual, I decided to give it a go and see if I could get the gantry on top of the CNC myself. I laid down some of that awesome styrofoam that came in the packing and I was able to get the gantry up onto the machine. It wasn't that bad. It probably wasn't smart. Sometimes I'm just not that smart. Once I got the gantry on the machine, I lined up one screw on each side and was able to pivot the gantry into place. And then it's just a matter of installing the rest of the screws. Just about the most finicky part of assembling the CNC machine was dealing with this cable run, this cable track. This bucket is filled with water and that is for the water cooling of the two horsepower spindle on the next wave. And this was nerve wracking. You've got some high technology items here, some electrical equipment with water running through it. And uh, it takes some getting used to. And you'll see a little bit later on that did bite me in the rear end a little bit. But I turned the machine on and just had a go. And it's a little bit nerve wracking the first time, but the next wave control pendant is pretty intuitive and I was able to get everything running. I loaded some G-code onto it from VCarve and hit go. It's at this point that it becomes apparent that we're gonna need some dust collection on this machine and I need to run the water cooling hoses a little bit differently. Don't make the same mistake I made, especially don't make the same mistake I made and point the water spewing out of the hose at your PC. Hit the e-stop and question your poor decisions. At this point, I've got dozens of hours in on this machine though, and I've learned a lot along the way, and there's a lot of things that I've done wrong with it, and there's a lot of things that I've done right with it. A couple of things I wanna tell you about, in case you're a little overwhelmed by the idea of getting a CNC, if you're the type of person who, who sees the value of having a CNC, but you're a little bit worried about the complications that can come with operating a CNC, it's really not that bad. As you can see in this clip, I run an MDF wasteboard to within an inch of its life. I put this wasteboard on as soon as I got the CNC going and I'm pulling it off maybe six, eight weeks later after running a lot of pieces on it. And I'm not delicate with the CNC wasteboard. A lot of people would put a piece of MDF down and put a milling bit in the machine and have the CNC mill that wasteboard perfectly flat. I didn't do that. 
I'm not that type of person. I just don't operate that way. I put the waste board down and start cutting parts. Another thing that a lot of people worry about though is work holding with a CNC. And I'm here to tell you it doesn't need to be that complicated. I'm not doing a lot of finished pieces at this point. A lot of the things that I've been routing have been other templates and workshop jigs and fixtures and things like that. And I have just been working into my workflow holes. I drill those holes first and then I just simply screw down the piece to the bed of the CNC. And I don't have to worry about double stick tape. I don't have to worry about milling tabs into my piece to hold everything together until I'm ready to take it apart at the end. I just put those holes in there, screw it down and cut out my pieces. It's really, really simple. Here, I'm making mounts for dust collection hoses in the shop. I wanted to make about 10 of these. I decided I might as well make 16 of them. It took hardly any time at all. Once I had everything set up in V-Carve, it was just a matter of hitting print or cut and in about 20, 25 minutes, I had 16 of these pieces perfectly done. All I needed to do after this was spend five minutes sanding them and they're ready to go. I can mount them on the wall and drop dust collection hose right in them. So here is Mike's bending form, or not bending form, just drawing form. And I'm gonna bring this to him and make sure that this is what he thought it was when he put it into Illustrator. And if it's right, I can knock out, I don't know, probably 14 out of a sheet for his next class. And it won't be difficult to do this again next time he has another class. You don't necessarily know what you're gonna need a CNC for until the possibility for, for CNC parts exists. I found myself milling up channels for an inlay on an ukulele I was building. I've milled Ikea cutting boards into parts for a robot my son and I were making. There's countless different ways that I'm all of a sudden finding, oh, I could just do that on the CNC. And the more I use it, the more it naturally works its way into my workflow. And now I'm starting to see that happen with my coworkers as well. Somebody came down and they were watching me route something and they said, wait a minute, if I was gonna do a pierced carving, you could hog away the middle sections for me that I would have a hard time doing with a fret saw and then I can just do the carving, huh? And I was like, exactly. But I'm gonna teach them how to do it because they could do it too. Having a CNC doesn't need a techno mind. I am technically minded, don't get me wrong. But I think the desire to have a CNC is really all that you need. They're pretty easy to set up. This next wave was incredibly easy to set up. I haven't trammed anything. I haven't calibrated anything. I basically put the gantry on, routed the cables, plugged it in and went. And I'm sure there are a lot of people who would put more calibration into their machines, but it's just not the way I do things. I'm kind of a run and gun kind of person. So that's the way I'm doing this. And it's working just fine. I'm using it all the time. And I'm really, really glad to have this machine available here in the fine woodworking shop. And my coworkers are starting to see why we have this machine here in the fine woodworking shop as well. If you have any questions about how I set something up the way that I did or why I set something up the way that I did, or even feeds and speeds in V-Carve for different materials I've been using, leave a comment below and I'll try and make a follow-up video. We're gonna do more woodworking with robots content here at Fine Woodworking. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but a lot of people are into it, so it's worth covering. Thanks so much to Nextway for sending out this 520. It's a beast and we love having it here in the shop and it's really made a difference in my workflow. All right, have a good one.